In this video, I'm sharing some of the web apps that I have built that have helped to get me a job as a software engineer. And personally, I'm always looking for the next side project to work on, to be able to kind of improve my skills and also learn some new technologies. But what I also try to do is not just aimlessly create a project. When I create a project, what I try and do is try and create a solution to a problem that's occurring either in my life or in someone else's life that is close to me. And that way the project might actually be used, but I can also see, okay, what are the actual requirements of the project outside of the whole technical aspect to it. And I've always been struggling to try and come up with these ideas. And in this video, I wanted to share with you some of the projects that I have built to hopefully give you guys some inspiration to be able to create ones of your own. So most of the projects I have built are using the Mern stack, so Mongo, Express, React, and Node.js. But of course you can implement whatever technologies you are trying to learn. So if you wanted to, for example, take out React and put in something like Angular or Vue, you can perfectly do that. Or if you're trying to build an API, instead of using something like Express and Node.js, you could use .NET or you could use any other language like Python, if you wanted to do a Python background, you can very easily swap that out and build the same application, but using the language that you are trying to learn or the specific framework. So the first project I'm gonna show you is a vehicle checklist app. And basically what I mean by that is if you're driving a truck or something like that, what you'll be able to do is open up the app and you'll have a list of checks that you'll need to do before starting your day of work. So for example, it could be, you know, check the tires, check X, Y, and Z, and you can click whether or not you've passed or failed that specific check. Similar to something what a pilot would do for a plane, you have all the different checks you need to do. So let's jump into the computer and show you what exactly this project looks like. So this here is the desktop page. And as you can see, we've got all the dates here on the left and an example of the time as well that it occurred on. Then what we can also include is the registration. So the registration of the specific vehicle. So maybe if you're a fleet and have multiple different vehicles, you can have different registration numbers for each vehicle. So you'll be able to track to see which actual vehicle this was for. We also have plant here. So for example, if you've got multiple different locations, so warehouse A and warehouse B, you can also include that in here. And checklist here, we can see HGV daily. So for example, you can have multiple different checklists. So if you're trying to create a checklist that's daily and a weekly and a monthly one, you can do that. So the idea is you go, you know, add a record and then they'll be able to choose case as a daily check, weekly check, monthly check, or whatever it might be. And we can also see here on the right then the status of that exact check to see if it passed or not. So when you click on one of these, what you can see on the right here is all the different checks. So we can see they're broken down into sections. So we have in cab and we have prior to leaving depot. So we got two in the second one and three in the first one. So the idea is that they're broken down into those sections that I mentioned there before. When we go into actually adding a checklist, what you can see is it here. So this is a mobile version that you would see. So the idea is instead of doing it on paper, all you have is your phone when you're walking around the vehicle to make it really nice and handy and also really useful because if it's, for example, raining outside, you can hold your phone outside and you won't have any issues, where if you're holding paper outside, it might get soggy, so it might be harder to maybe tick some checkboxes. So we can see here on the left, for example, when we click in cab, what will happen is we'll come over here to the right-hand screen and what it will show you is how many checks there is. So we're on the first of four in the in cab section and then whatever the actual check it is. So for here is just making sure that there's, for example, good visibility through the cap windows and we can tap on pass or fail, whether or not the vehicle is passing or failing this check. If we are going to say that it failed, what we're gonna see here is this error screen. And what we can do, what I mentioned before, is type in a note about the failure. So again, if we're looking at a tire saying there's maybe a scuff on it, and we can also choose file so we can actually take a picture of whatever the issue might be. And this is really nice. You can't exactly do this with a paper checklist. You can say it failed and it failed on whatever reason it is, but you can't exactly upload a picture with this. What you might do is take a picture on your phone, but then it's kind of hard to track where all these pictures are going. Then if we take a look at accounts, so the way this has been set up is we've got our login screen here on the left. So you sign in with your email and password. On the right, it's kind of very basic. 
We just have first name, last name, and we have some details about the specific vehicle that the driver is trying to register. So they can put in their make and model of their vehicle and they can also choose the checklist and plant or kind of location, warehouse, whatever it might be that they're working from. So the idea is that each maybe company might set up their own version of this and they'll have their own series of checklists and locations to go from. And their drivers will be able to go on and register. And what we could also build on top of this to kind of extend the whole thing is build sort of an admin account. They can see all the different vehicles that have all the different checks and monitor them to see if they are passing or failing. I'll put a link in the description for the GitHub repository so you can be able to go ahead and see how this project is structured in terms of the code itself. The next project I'm gonna show you is an itinerary application. And the reason why I created this was down to the reason of when I was away, I would always be sending photos back home to family members to show them what it is I'm getting up to. And they'd also be curious about, you know, where are you? So if I was going away and was going to multiple different places, what they can do is log into this application and they'll be able to see, okay, on this current day, they're at this place and here's some pictures that I might have uploaded. So if we take a look at the project here, we can see an example of past holidays and current holidays. So it's broken down into what is currently active based on the days and also what has happened in the past. So we can go ahead and log in and see some of the stuff that's happened in the past, which is really, really nice. And we scroll down here again, we can see a mobile view of what this will look like. As you can see on the right, we have this one here in Bali, Indonesia with the dates. We can also see the past holidays there as well. So this is a really interesting project where you can play with different permissions and being able to restrict access to certain pages depending on whatever the user might have set. So for example, in this project, what I've done is one person can create a holiday. So that's kind of the area and place that you're going. And you can add another user on to be able to edit the project so they can add photos and messages and things like that. Whereas you might also add viewers. So what they might not be able to do is actually add or edit anything, but they can log on and see that, you know, a certain picture has been put up, which is really nice. One thing I did to expand on this project was I added in real time flight information into the application. After creating a holiday, what you're able to do is add flights onto certain days. And what's really nice is all you have to do is put in your flight number and whatever airline you're going on. And what it will be able to do is figure out what time that flight is actually on. So you don't have to fill out all the information out yourself when inputting this information. And then what happens is when it comes time to the flight actually departing, what it will do is it will give you a status of the flight and will also give you a percentage. So when it's actually in flight and it's halfway through, what it will show you on screen is 50% and it's a nice little progress bar so you can see when the flight has actually landed, which is really nice when someone is trying to figure out, okay, has the flight taken off yet? When is the flight? Is it delayed? How long is it delayed? Okay, they're in the flight. I haven't heard from them. Are they still there? Have they nearly landed? And this will be able to provide all that real-time information within the app and not have to go to some external page to be able to get all this information. This is one of my favorite projects because it's one that I have personally used the most and you can also upload lots of photos which is really nice because I do love my photography so I'll be able to share that with my family members which is really really nice. Another project I want to share with you is this money tracking application. The reason why I want to share this project with you is because I have this dashboard page. And as you can see here, we have some charts that is kind of showing information that is grouped by, for example, the month. So we might have a whole list of payments in this example that went out. And what we're able to do is then use a query to be able to group them by month and then show them in this graph, which is really, really nice. And we have a few of them here. And we also have some stuff up here that's just kind of pulling specific data from the database again, which is really nice. So as you can see here, here's an example of the payments page where we can see you know, what it was, who paid for it, the amount, the purchase date, and kind of some other little information that is specific to this project. And if I keep scrolling down, one thing that I really liked about this that I created was this little chat bot. And the idea behind this chat bot was essentially to be able to add new payments into the system without actually just filling out a form. So what it will do is it will show this screen to you as you can see here. So it says, in my case, that would be hello, Ryan. And it would say, I am the guide's chatbot. 
and then we'll just kind of give you some more kind of messages and then it will say what did you purchase and what we can see here down the bottom is this form input field with a send button so what we can do is we can go ahead and type in whatever it is that we wanted and then what it will do is it will keep asking us a few other questions so we actually have a video of that here and i'll show you sorry for the low quality but we can see here that it's typing and we got this nice little animation and what's nice about this is it kind of gives the user some real-time feedback as if they're talking to an actual person. So in this example, it says, what did you purchase? And I'm gonna type in milk and then press send. Then you can see that here I've typed in my milk and then it's saying, okay, how much did the milk cost? So it's a really nice interaction with the person or in this case, a chatbot, but it kind of feels like you're chatting to a person and it's not just saying, okay, how much is whatever you bought? but it's kind of taking in that information and using it. So because I typed in milk or I could have typed in pizza, tea, office equipment, whatever it might be, it will say, okay, how much did whatever I type in cost? And I'll keep on going through. Now we are able to type in a number. And what's really nice is this input field actually changes from question to question. So in the first case, it was just a regular text field. And in this case, because we're dealing with price, it won't allow us to put in any letters because it's number, which is really nice and helps kind of elevate that level of validation. And this time on screen, you can see that we have a date picker, which is really nice. So they don't have to type it in fully. They can click on the little drop down arrow and they can put in the date that they got. Then what we have is whose money did you use? So in this example, we are able to pick between two different things. And in this case, was it my money or was it the company's money? So there's two little buttons to be able to do this. And it's kind of like a Boolean in the database. So that way we can put in yes or no or whatever it might be, but they don't actually have to type that in. It's really nice that they can just press a button and it's not like a checkbox as well. It's instantly when they tap on, for example, personal, it will go straight away to the next step. This is a pretty simple example of what the chatbot can be used for. And these are all the questions that it actually asks. And then what it will ask you is, would you like to add another one? And that is just whether or not you want to repeat that whole process again. And I'm gonna click no. And then what it's just gonna say is, okay, bye, you know, thanks, have a nice day or whatever it might be. So it's a much nicer experience in terms of filling out a field. It's obviously very different, but what's nice is you kind of have this interaction with a computer, which kind of feels like there's a person behind the screen and you can kind of have a chat with them. Now, in this example, this doesn't support, you know, just regular having a chat. So you can't just type in hello and it's gonna say hello back or ask a question. It's not gonna give you some sort of reply based off your question, but it's a really nice and simple chat bot to be able to take a normal static form and build it into a chat experience. And that's what I really like about this. So I hope this video helps and gives you some inspiration about creating your own side project and getting your first job as a software engineer. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. See ya.